uh, make sure that it's going to be available. OK, so uh, I will start um, talking about uh, yeah, the agenda for today. So we're going to have this uh, introduction to MPC. All the technical, technical topics are going to be given by Nam here. Then we're going to have a very quick fire chat um, with some, I would say, frequently asked questions of this topic um, to anyone that's trying to explore um, like how to build or what what's, uh, what is this, this stuff with uh, MPC. Um, and then we're going to have an open floor uh, Q&A session for anyone that wants to ask something. Um, yeah, of course, I, I think uh, during Nam's presentation, you will be free to ask as, as well. Um, yeah, just uh, type your question in chat. I will. I will be ready to bring that up. Um, yeah, so uh, first of all, we're all part of uh, Privacy and Scaling Explorations, or PSC. Um, so we're basically a team made of uh, cryptographers, uh, engineers, researchers, um, and all people interested in like building open source and free uh, software tools. Um, First of all, to like uh, enable uh, enable any privacy related uh, application or help towards uh, um, bringing up more privacy related tools, but at the same time trying to um, help on the scaling of the infrastructure of Ethereum. Um, but at the same time, uh, I will call the explorations part uh, is mostly on. Uh, what what is the latest latest on cryptography and and re research that so we can um, be up to date on, on what what is the best that we can do for um, this uh, this space? So um, yeah, we were we're all uh, with Kimi and I'm here. We're all part of PC. So happy to bring this up to you guys. Um, the talk today will be, I'm just a presenter, the talk will be made by uh, Nam. He's uh, working on the MPC research team at uh, MPC. And um, yeah, I think uh, we're good to go, Nam. Um, thanks. I will uh, take over from here, so let me share my screen. Yeah, sorry, I was still presenting. Okay, so um, are you seeing my slides right now? That's right. Okay, okay, thanks. So uh, so welcome everyone to this uh, MPC 101. Uh, so with this uh, like very brief talk, I'm, I, I will be trying to uh, give you my pointers so that you can uh, start doing some uh, research about this or uh, if you want to try it out there will be also uh, a tool that uh, I will also show today so um, so the, the structure of this uh, brief talk is uh, first of all about what is MPC and then uh, a very uh, quick uh, introduction uh, to Gabo circuit like a technique of uh, like how you, how do you do uh, MPC, right? And then uh, I will introduce the uh, MPC library that is uh, an in-house uh, Gabo circuit uh, library for building MPC. Uh, okay, so so first of all, uh, what is MPC? So MPC stands for uh, Secure Multiparty Computation. So uh, this is uh, there is no S in the MPC. Uh, so only M, P, and C because like if you're doing a multi-party computation but that is not secure, then what is the point, right? So this uh, secure is kind of like implied by this MPC. So uh, you can think of MPC as uh, this box that is right here. So this box is an MPC of a function F that allows two parties, Alice and Bob, they can 
provide the inputs XA and XB. And then this box will compute Y, that is the function F on the input XA and XB. So the property that we want out of this box of uh, MPCF function F, uh, including uh, like three important uh, security properties. The first one is what we call privacy, right? So this is the first thing about uh, multi-party computation. Uh, we want to make sure that when Alice and Bob join this computation, only Alice will know uh, her input XA and Bob will know his uh, input XB. After this computation, only the uh, result Y is disclosed, but not XA and XB. Uh, we want the MPC to have independence of inputs. So uh, XA and XB are independent from each other when they are used as input into this uh, this MPC box. You can think of like application of like when you're doing a salary negotiation or like this uh, famous uh, application of best friend, best friend or love uh, like puzzle solving. Uh, the third one you want is uh, correctness. So you want to make sure that this Y is the output of F apply on XA and XB. So all of these uh, three properties compose of what is uh, necessary for this uh, MPC box to satisfy. Uh, so uh, here I will try to uh, contrast a little bit MPC with uh, ZKP. So ZKP is like what most people uh, in this uh, in this uh, talk would be uh, familiar with, right? So uh, when you look at ZKP, so ZKP allows the prover to convince the verifier that an instant X or something, something with this X is true. Uh, so it means that the prover must know a witness a W such that we want to test this relation of uh, X and W and it has to return one. So this relation R is like the function F before, right? X is uh, the, the, the input of, uh, of both party, the prover and the verifier, and W, the witness, is only uh, known by the prover. So you can think of ZKP as an application-specific MPC. So this MPC will, uh, will implement the function F that checks uh, this relation and uh, try to match uh, the inputs uh, X prime and X by both the prover and the verifier. But uh, like we soon realized that uh, because X and X prime, they are public, right? So in this MPC, only uh, the prover has the has a secret here. So by this like inherent nature of uh, ZKP, uh, even if we use MPC to implement ZKP, we can only have uh, the prover to to have the to have the secrecy here. So we can uh, think of MPC as something that is more generic compared with uh, ZKP. So ZKP is just an application of, of MPC, but because this uh, the ZKP is like optimized towards one functionality, right? So ZKP can be uh, more more efficient in doing this uh, this function. But what we're talking about here is uh, to enable uh, like broader uh, class of applications. So in ZKP, you can only have one party provide the uh, private inputs. And uh, the other one is just like say, this is what I want to check. And the output is uh, like whether the, the check is passed or not, right? So this is very, very limited. Um, in order to enable uh, a broader class of application, we need a more tool uh, that is uh, MPC. So uh, I think that like everyone, when they are introduced to a new tool, especially uh, when the tool has some mathematics behind, you are probably like very eager to understand uh, the basic things about uh, the realization of this technique, right? So uh, next, uh, what we talk about is a technique called cable circuit that we realize this uh, MPC box that we just uh, dis described here, right? So let's see that how do we uh, implement this function F using cable circuit. So um, with, 
with MPC. We are talking about generic MPC. So you can think of this box as like a functionality, a function F that will uh, check an additional input that is this uh, public circuit, right? And then what you want is you want to execute this public circuit stuck here on the input of Alice and Bob XISB. So both XI and XB, they are private. And uh, when you apply these, uh, this circuit on these two, two, two private inputs, you get the, uh, the, the, the output Y. And uh, what this uh, MPC box uh, has to be able to process is uh, like you can break down the circuit into uh, some some gates, right? And then what we care, what what we care about is uh, this uh, AND gate or the, and and this XOR gate. Uh, so if you want to think about like this is boolean, and then the arithmetic form of this AND would be multiplication. Uh, and uh, X all would be at when you think uh, try to com compare this with uh, what what is familiar with you in uh, in the in the ZKP right. So you want multiplication and at in ZKP uh, for the boolean form of uh, MPC. Uh, you want to implement and and X all. So with and and X all we can implement pretty much everything. So uh, how the Gabo circuit works roughly is that. Uh, in the double circuit. Uh, so first of all, the double circuit is uh, a protocol that has only two parties. So uh, you can only do a uh, two party computation with double circuit, but that should be like sufficient for a lot of applications out there. So in uh, the double circuit protocol, you, you have uh, two parties. The first one is called the gabbler and the second one is called the evaluator. So what the gabbler does is that the gabbler will try to encrypt this circuit and uh, the private input xg and then send the, the, the encrypted form of these uh, inputs to the evaluator and the evaluator in some way can obtain the decryption keys based on uh, the evaluator's private input xd and then because now the evaluator has the encrypted circuit and then uh, she also has the decryption key based on her private inputs. Then she can decrypt this, uh, this encrypted circuit and then get the uh, output Y. And then if the output Y is important for the gabbler, then uh, the developer can just uh, send, this, uh, send this output to the gabbler. And uh, what is uh, good about gabble circuit uh, protocol is that um, it has very low latency because as we can see here, right? So uh, there is like one round, two rounds, three rounds, and then uh, if this is not necessary, then in three rounds, we can uh, conclude the, the, the protocol. So there are also other techniques out there, but it has higher rounds or it has uh, higher computational complexity. But here, uh, what we want to focus on is um, we, we, we try to minimize those other criteria, but we uh, trade, 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 trade off with uh, communication costs. So you can imagine if you have high bandwidth, then uh, this is a very suitable protocol for you. Uh, so, hey, no. yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, your, I think uh, your voice is uh, cutting a bit. So if you want to turn off your camera to. Oh, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, we have a question actually, but uh, Arpit. So, um, yeah, why low latency? If you can play again, I'm guessing it's in the in the garble circuit. Uh, yes, because uh, no matter what, uh, no no matter what what circuit you do want to process, you only do these many rounds, right? So there there is one round where. Uh, there is uh, the sending of this encrypted circuit, and then there is uh, another round of uh, trying to obtain the decryption case based on the input of the evaluator. Output. Uh, in the case that the gabbler also wants to have the output, then 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 uh, the evaluator can also spend an, an additional round sending this output to the gabbler. 
So uh, it has like constant rounds. And can, you can imagine if you execute this over the internet, then uh, you like don't have to care too much about the uh, latency of the of the network. Uh, we also, I think, Fini, you wanna ask, ask your bit? Okay. And uh, yeah, RP uh, got it. Uh, got it now. So free to continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, now, uh, like, we, 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 we understand that uh, in the gable circuit technique, uh, you process the circuit, right? And this circuit can be broken down into a gate. And uh, we can try to handle uh, the Boolean gates here, uh, AND gate and XOR gate, right? But um, like the generic technique of gable circuit, is like applicable to almost any uh, any any kind of gates because uh, the the the, the um, because the the reason of the gable circuit technique is to encode the truth table. So as long as you have this truth table in mind, you can uh, you can you can you can gable the the gates and then have it evaluated. So uh, the protocol include uh, the Gabler's algorithm and the evaluator's algorithm. So let's first look at this uh, Gabler's algorithm first. So uh, we are trying to encode the Boolean end gate here. Uh, so the first thing here is that uh, let's look at this gate. We have the input A and B and the output C. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to pick random labels for each uh, possible value input and output of this gate. So you can imagine you have A0 that represents the bit zero of gate A, uh, of wire A, uh, A1 being the uh, bit one of the uh, wire A, and then you have uh, B0, B1, C0, C1 the same. So all these random labels, okay? And then uh, we want to encode this uh, and truth table. So this and truth table has four entries. Uh, you want to say that uh, with A0 and B0, you have to obtain C0. With A0, B1, you have to obtain C1, uh, C0. With A1 and B0, you have to obtain C0. And only with A1, B1, you can obtain C1. So this is the encoding of the uh, of the AMP truth table, right? So we're trying to try to do this for this end game. So uh, first of all, we can uh, do this uh, encryption. So you encrypt the C0 with A0, B0, and then you get this uh, label T1, okay? And then you do the same for uh, T2, T3, and T4. Notice that only the encryption of uh, A1 and B1, sorry, using the key A1 and B1 should uh, has the uh, plan X uh, C1, right? So uh, T4 encrypts C1 and T1, T3, and T2. T1, T2, and T3 here all encrypt C0s, but under different keys. And then uh, we can permit this, uh, this table that has four ciphertext, T1 to T4, and then sends it to evaluator. So because like these uh, table entries are already permuted, uh, the evaluator cannot know which ciphertext encode which one, right? And we also want to send A0 to the evaluator. Uh, suppose that the input of party uh, that has the input A is A0, right? So bit zero here. Uh, we also want to send the mapping of C0 being zero and C1 uh, being one. If uh, C is the final output, let's assume that we only want to evaluate this A and A and B and, and try to obtain C, right? So the circuit is as simple as this. So you, you want the uh, evaluator be able to distinguish between C0 and C1. If uh, she gets C0, C0 then she, she knows that uh, the output is zero. If she gets C1, then the output is, is one. Uh, so, so, so far, what we have done is that we have encrypted the circuit, right? And then send it to the evaluator. Now, the evaluator has to obtain the decryption key in some way. Notice that here, the Gabler has already sent one decryption key to the to the evaluator, right? So suppose uh, there is A0, right? Suppose there is A0 here. 
So uh, the possible outputs are like T1 and uh, T2, either this, but uh, we have to deliver B0 and B1 to the evaluator in order to be able to, to, to decrypt T1 and T2, right? So uh, for the evaluator to be able to obtain either B, B0 and B1, we use oblivious transfer. So this is a protocol that allows uh, Bob to communicate a bit uh, to Alice and then obtain uh, either M0, M1 based on uh, the bit uh, being B, uh, being uh, zero or one, but Alice does not know this, uh, this bit that Bob is sending. So basically after this protocol, Alice send Bob a bit as a, a message by based on the bit, right? But Alice does not learn learn this uh, learn this bit at all. Uh, the the technique behind this, uh, I will not explain because uh, probably uh, we we don't have time for 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 that in in this brief talk. You can uh, you can ask if uh, if you really want to understand in the in the open floor. So uh, so now here, uh, suppose that uh, the bit from from Bob is one. Then after the oblivious transfer, uh, Bob has obtained uh, B1, right? And now with A0 and B1, Bob can uh, try to decrypt all the tables. And then uh, he realized that uh, he can only decrypt T2 because he's, he only has uh, a key A0 and B1, right? And then obtain C0. And because the uh, Alice has sent uh, the, the mapping that C0 is, is zero, then uh, Bob learns that uh, the output, the final output C in this evaluation is uh, zero. And then uh, Bob can send this to, to, to Alice. Okay, so uh, so that's the uh, Gabo circuit technique. Uh, we can do the same for almost uh, every every gate, right? So not just and as long as you you can encode this gate as a truth table, you can use the same technique uh, to to do that. Uh, okay, so uh, that is uh, the uh, yes. Uh, yeah, sorry, just want to pause for a second for maybe um, we have question from the crowd. I okay. think you know the earlier the, the the algorithm is kind of difficult to understand it. So yeah, I I want to pause for a second to see if we get question from the crowd. Maybe not, but um, like how many of you are familiar with this um like a zk things? Would it be too difficult for you to understand it? <laughs> Okay, no one is showing something. No worry. Uh, we can do, you know, like a more question uh, later. So, um, thank you for sharing. Okay, yeah, great. Okay, cool. You don't know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so thank you. So, you know, like uh, what I'm going to introduce is this uh, library called MPZ. Uh, it is developed by the Teoretic Notary team at PSE. Uh, so when you are using this, it, it doesn't matter if you don't understand any of, of these, right? Because you are using the library. As long as you understand this box, that is okay. So you have an APC uh, that will compute some function, right? And then you can allow a party to, pro to, to input a private input. There is another uh, party that provide another private input. And then uh, together using this box, you can uh, compute this, this Y. So the, the so you know like uh, this this part that is like uh what you do right this part is uh sorry no these are what uh the users will do right so the developer part is actually this part and then uh you will wonder like okay so how do i uh do this thing right how do i describe the, the function f uh so i just have it for you you can use this uh mpc library uh, so MPC is uh, basically an experimental collection of MPC libraries written in Rust. Yeah, this Rust part is important. Uh, so, uh, and we are also having some effort of uh, doing uh, some research experiments 
uh, and implementation on, on, on top of this MPZ code base. So MPZ is pretty simple, but on top of that, we also have some uh, highly experimental new things that we use MPZ as a base. So you can do a lot of things uh, with uh, MPZ. Uh, in the TLS notary team, they use it for uh, distributed key generation, they use it for TLS encryption and in decryption. And here's the link to the uh, to the MPZ. So basically you go to the PSE uh, GitHub and then you can find the MPZ rep. It is not uh, so hard to find. Uh, so MPZ does a lot of things, uh, but to describe the circuit, you only have to care about this, uh, these two, these two plays. Uh, these two plays, MPC circuits and MPC circuits macro. So this allows you to describe the uh, Boolean circuit. And there are also some, some macros for, for, uh, for fast uh, description of the, of the circuit. Uh, yeah, so here yeah, it is pretty simple, right? You can also find some example there. For example, uh, you can use this uh, circuit builder and then uh, you try to do some input and then you can use this mac macro, bit XR and trace to do something if that is what you want. But there is also bit XR, bit and, bit XR and, yeah, you can find all of these things here. Uh, so basically uh, you can write like some part of the circuit and then you can compose that, uh, like reuse that as, as much as you want. Uh, another way, in the MP in the MPZ library is that you can fit it with some uh, Bristol fashion circuit. So this is the uh, traditional way of uh, describe some uh, some some complicated circuit, right? So for example, this is uh, the AES uh, the AES uh, circuit. So you can just uh, fit this text file that describe uh, how the how the uh, wires are connected to each other and what gate XOR or N gate you want to uh, to do with it, then MPZ can pass this uh, input. Uh, yeah, and then uh, translate in, into this form and then you can have a circuit in the MPZ as well. Uh, you can also think of writing your circuit in uh, other higher level language like CERCOM, right? Uh, and I think that this is uh, a more familiar way for ZKDEV to uh, pick up uh, MPZ. Uh, here I have an example of writing uh, in the product uh, argument. Uh, there are some uh, there are some something that you can see about this. So we have some effort trying to uh, turn this into the the MPC circuit. Uh, here is the repo. So come to where it C. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, that's it. Uh, so we can do the file chat and, and question. Yeah, so there is a question in the chat, but uh, Takamichi seems to have uh, taken it already. Um, I will just mention it. Um, so uh, Kenty was asking uh, if, um, like if both Alice and Bob, when they send the values uh, to the gate, uh, if you can know which value was sent first. Um, yeah, can you just let me know if that uh, was the correct question? Yeah. Um, Yeah, so I am uh, going over the question right now. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there is a question on, uh, like, so when Khan Shen uh, say something about no basic about ZK, not so much about Gabo circuit. So, you know, like, uh, you don't actually need to know about ZK to pick this up because uh, Gabo circuit is like an ancient technique, right? It has even before what we have, what, what you know about ZK these days. So it has, it, we, we have GAPO circuit before cross 16, before plum and everything. Uh, and you only need to know is like, you know how to describe a uh, computation as a circuit. So that is the first point. The second point, if you want to go deeper, then uh, maybe something about uh, hash function, 
and symmetric encryption, and that is enough. So very, very basic. Yes, so. Is the gambling reusable? Okay, so uh, that is a very good question. Uh, is the gambling reusable for the same circuit for different inputs? No, you have to uh, redo the gambling circuit protocol every time. Because you can think of this, right? Uh, so I generate a gambling circuit, right? I send it to you. So uh, this time you are using uh, some input, for example, uh, uh, for example, you, you are using input, input zero, right? And the next time I'm, I'm trying to do, use the same circuit, right? And then this time you input one. So basically you just exhaust the, uh, the circuit possibility of me. And then you, it, uh, like eventually you, you learn what is my input. So we cannot reuse the, uh, the we, we cannot reuse the circuit. The circuit after generation is a one-time thing. Yes, so uh, so about witness. Um, so there is no witness in the MPC. Uh, you, like witness is the concept of uh, the secret the zero norm proof, right? In the ZKP, but uh, in MPC, let's say that everyone has witness because everyone has some secret C here. So for example, in the uh, in the GAPO circuit. Uh, in, in the end example here, right? So uh, Alice has some, some secret bit here, Bob has some secret bit here, and they want to compute this end game, right? It is very different from the case of uh, of zero not proof where there is only the prover has the witness, but the verifier doesn't have any, any secret. Oh, yes. So I think I answer uh, all question. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So uh, a high level overview of how OT works. Okay. So yes, let me. Uh, I have a hidden slide for that. Which one? I can help you on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just located. Uh, okay. Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, OT, right? So OT, Alice has two message, M0 and M1. Bob has a bit B, that is either zero or one. And then Alice is supposed to deliver either M0 or M1, but she's not supposed to learn about this bit, bit B, okay? So here's how we do it technically. Uh, so the, the, the same thing, so Alice uh, has to message M0, M1, and then uh, pop speed is uh, either 0 or 1. So let's say the pop speed is uh, 0. So now what Bob has to do is that Bob is going to sample a public key pair, okay? That is called PK0, SK0, right? So uh, I suppose if you are familiar with uh, this, uh, like RSA, uh, you know that if you have the public key, you can encrypt, but you can only decrypt with the secret key, right? So Bob will sample this uh, key pair, PK0, SK0, and a random R, okay? And then Bob is going to send PK0 and R to Alice, and then Alice will encrypt M0 with PK0 and M1 with R. but Alice, when looking at PK0 and R, she cannot distinguish whether PK0 is the public key or R, R is the public key, right? So Alice is going to send C0 and C1 to, to Bob. And then Bob, because he has only SK0, but not the secret key of this random R, Bob can only decrypt C0 to get M0, but not C1. So this is the technique behind a uh, previous transfer use some uh, public key cryptography, but very, very basic.
All right, if we had a bunch of uh, questions related to public transfer. Uh, yes, so, you know, like, uh, yeah, there are strong uh, oblivious uh, transfer protocol that prevent uh, from sampling to to public keys, right? For example, uh, here, if, if, we, if we look at this, right? So here we say that uh, not sample two key pair, PK0 and SK0, and the random R. But if, for example, we ask Bob, the way that he's going to draw this random R is to uh, is to hash some 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 something, right? And then uh, Bob can also prove with your knowledge that this R is the output of some hash function based on on some input. Then uh, in some way, uh, Alice can by verifying this uh, zero knowledge proof that this R is the output of the hash. She can uh, be confident that R is random. Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so MPC uh, is not better than ZKP. Uh, it is more generic. Uh, ZKP is more efficient in the sense that uh, it, it is a fixed functionality, right? So you can have a lot of uh, let's say leverage to, 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 to do some optimization. But uh, because MPC is more generic. So if you want to develop an MPC protocol, then uh, you don't really have a lot of leverages. Uh, encryption. So I, I'm not sure. Uh, this is the. This is the same. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You mean? Oh, right. So I, I mean, uh, not, not stacks, not stacks. Uh, you can use some uh, snark proof, like based on discrete lock. That is the traditional way. Yeah, I mean before snark and stocks, you can use uh, snark proof, but uh, snark snark proof is uh, is not uh, as uh, searching as uh, snark and stock. Uh, we have someone to ask uh, about 2PC. Uh, if you have time, can you cover a little bit of that? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, so, so okay, so here's the view, right? Uh, 2PC, 2PC is, no, <laughs> is no mystery. <laughs> so I mean, look, at, look at this. Uh, so MPC is uh, CQ multi-party computation. So 2PC is two-party computation. So basically what is described here, right? So you can only have two parties in two PC. But in the case of MPC, you can actually have more than, more than, uh, more than two. Uh, yeah, so the reason why uh, like we distinguish two PC and uh, MPC is, uh, let's say that there are a lot of things that happen between two parties and uh, that are of, of interest. For example, uh, you can use uh, two PC for authentication. Uh, or doing, for example, machine learning inference, right? Uh, yeah, and MPC you can you can use it for example uh, statistic. Yeah, more 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 more, more general applications. Let's say 2PC is a specific case where you can uh, do some optimization because you limit the number of parties. Uh, 
Okay, so there are a lot of questions. Okay, not only for a circuit. Uh, yes, so right now we have code based circuit for MPZ. We have also a uh, crystal function circuit parser in M uh, to, 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 to circuit in MPZ. And the circum circuit is, uh, let's say, something that we are, we are developing. So we have some result already. You can try to use it, but probably it, it will have some bugs. Uh, okay, so compare with FHE. Okay, so uh, yeah, so this is a very interesting question. Uh, so, so FHE, you know, like I described couple circuit, right? Couple circuit is a technique to realize MPC or 2PC. FHE is actually another technique that we can use to realize MPC. So it has this, uh, it has this uh, relationship between FHE and MPC. So FHE, FHE, so MPC is a collective of, uh, techno of techniques to do CQ computation. FHE is one of the technique in this collection of technology. Uh, and uh, so the difference between GABO circuit and fully homomorphic encryption is that fully homomorphic uh, GABO circuit has very low uh, computational complexity See, because it only based on uh, some some hash or symmetric encryption or very simple uh, like non lattice uh, public, public key cryptography, right? But FHE is based on lattice uh, cryptography. So it is like not as uh, efficient in terms of com computational uh, complexity, but GAPO circuit has higher communication costs and FHE has like a lot less. So I think it depends on your use case. If you have a lot of CPU, then you may want to use FHE. If you want to do this on uh, some, some phone and you happen to have strong internet, then maybe you can try GAPO circuit. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, multi-party interactive OT and partition GABO circuit. Uh, okay, so I, I, I'm not really familiar with these, uh, these terms. Maybe like if, if you know something you can share with us. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. No, I was just... Uh going through a paper they have proposed a zk fabric a component uh, it is in uh, telecommunication uh, in 6g where the scenario is to uh, verify a statement of alice anonymously without revealing secret and over there they have introduced uh, terms like partition garbage set partition garbage circuits for multiple verifiers and multi-party non-interactive OT for uh, the multiple verifiers to verify the statements publicly. So I just wanted to get uh, an, a knowledge, a clear knowledge about uh, these terms to understand the concept. Yeah. So uh, yeah, sorry about that because, like you know, uh, probably these are like advanced uh, primitives that that you do uh, within this uh, couple circuit field. So there is a huge gap between the basic version and this uh, advanced version. I get it. If you want to understand this, maybe you want to do some backtracking. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I will just follow along with the basics for now and we'll uh, reach out again if I can have something around it. Thank you. Got it, so I think we can... Um... Follow to the our chat. A lot of questions. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. I will uh, present my screen.
So um, yeah, so I think our current focus uh, in our team is to enable the creation of MPC uh, applications. Uh, but so Nam, if you can like uh, talk about what use cases does MPC unlock, um, I will say like by itself and what could it unlock uh, with um, combined with some CK uh, applications that exist today or yeah. Um, yes, thank you. So, uh, what use case? Uh, let's say that MPC is uh, closely related to threshold cryptography. So, you already see a lot of uh, MPC applications out there. So, what you call MPC wallet uh, threshold signatures, they are all uh, they are all application of MPC, right? Uh, so, recently there is the uh, let's say the emergence of uh, ZKML, which allows you to do a uh, verifiable inference on a model using a sample, right? Uh, we can upgrade ZKML to uh, MPCML, which allows uh, both the model and the sample to be private. So with ZKML, you can only have either the, uh, the model or the, or the sample be, being private because, you know, like it is ZKP model, you only have uh, the prover to have the witness. So either this model owner or the sampler or, or, or the sample owner has to be the prover. There is there is no other case. But if we upgrade CKP to be uh, MPC, then we can have uh, like the true privacy preserving machine learning inference. Uh, there are also other interesting uh, applications of MPC. Uh, that are like consider uh, in the past. So you can think of private order matching, uh, private voting, private auction, or privacy preserving block proposal for for e uh, for the for the for the, for the blockchain. Uh, so any application that you want to remove the intermediary but you don't want uh, everything to be transparent. That can be an application of, of, uh, of MPC. You can think of maybe MPC EVM. So uh, if I and you, we engage in some, uh, uh, co like uh, some, some, some computation together and then uh, the output will be signed by both of us and published on the, on the blockchain. Right? We can have a smart contract for that. So I think that is going to be uh, like an interesting application. There are also other applications that uh, maybe, uh, for example, uh, we go to some events and then we can try to match our past events based on this, uh, for example, POI, POIP. And uh, that is done. So it, it, it will be like some, some surprise. Oh, I, I, uh, we, we we attended the, the same event some time before. I think that is like some interesting real life application. Yeah, and also um, let's not forget that we have a TLS notary, which are the builders of this um, MPC actual uh, library to use. Uh, if you're a Rust guy, just uh, feel free to explore it and. Like this, uh, the topics that them uh, was talking about today, they're implemented there. So take a look. Um, yeah, well, I guess this was already asked. Um, I'm not sure if you want to talk uh, about the, this, like why MPC and not FHE. Um, we also had the question of like, is MPC better than zero knowledge? Uh, you know. Um, I think there is uh, there is quite some confusion. Um, I really like this um, uh, slide that you made, like uh, yeah, uh, being like um, CK. It's actually an application specific type of uh, multi party computation. Um, so I think uh, with with a lot of people that mostly the, the ones that are interested in these topics are come from from the zero knowledge field uh so yeah i guess uh yeah why mpc and not fhg but 
YMPC and not CKDN. I don't know. Uh, I think it's a good topic to, to run about. Uh, yes, so uh, I think this is among one of the uh, questions, uh, but uh, maybe let me make a summary here. So uh, FHE is among the MPC techniques that we can use, okay, alongside with the double circuit that I introduced in this talk. So uh, so that is like, uh, we cannot really say like why MPC and not FHE, but like why not using FHE for MPC? So that, that is going to be the, the precise uh, the precise question. Uh, so yeah, so like when you okay. want to realize some uh, some applicate some some privacy preserving application, right? For example, uh, among the question, uh, Kenty, uh, there is a question about like healthcare data privacy act, right? Uh, yeah. So now, okay, let's consider this as an example. Uh, so should I use uh, FHE? Or should I use double circuit, right? Uh, now suppose uh, this healthcare data privacy is that okay? I uh, have some uh, say I go to some some test center to do some tests, and I got a sample, right? And then there is this application that uh, will send my sample to some server, and then using this model, uh, it can predict some of my health issues. So let's consider this, this application. And we want to do some uh, privacy uh, preservation for this application. So should we use double circuit or should we use FHG? Uh, so actually, in this case, uh, it, I think that both FHG and uh, double circuit is, uh, is applicable. But um, okay, let, let's say that Let's look at the uh, the institution side, right? So the one that actually has the model. Now suppose uh, we use FHE, right? We can do something like so: the client is going to encrypt the sample with uh, the client's key, and then uh, the client will send this key together with the encrypted sample to the to the institution, and the institution can encrypt the model with uh, with this this very same key. Uh, and then uh, do some uh, inference on the cybertext and return encrypted result to the client, right? In this, in this, uh, in this way of using uh, the FHG, we can see clearly that because the, the institution doesn't have the decryption key, because the, the key is coming from the client side, right? So only the client can decrypt the encrypted result. So uh, this has a very uh, heavy burden of computation on the on the institutions institutions so we can see very very clear uh, but like from the client side it just does some maybe uh, 100 encryptions and that's it uh, and send the side effects uh, to the to the uh, to, to the to the institution so there is also like not very much burden in computation, uh, not very much burden in the uh, in the bandwidth, right? So you don't want to spend the data there. Now, double circuit. Double circuit. Okay, yeah, so uh, let me continue with this uh, double circuit approach. So with double circuit, you can imagine something like, okay, the, uh, the, the institution is going to double the the inference, uh, the inference circuit, right? And then have this very big circuit sent to the client. So the client is going to receive maybe one gigabyte of data. And then I think the client is not uh, happy about it because now I'm spending my expensive data on, uh, on checking this. So in this, uh, in this, uh, in this case, maybe you, you want something like, okay, let that let institution to, to take over burden if that is the case. But in some uh, model, we may have like uh, the, the both party has the same capability. Then uh, you you may want like okay, the gapler may have like slighter, uh, stronger, slightly stronger hardware. Then uh, the the in this case, the gapler has to has to do more not so much more than the uh, evaluator. 
but still uh, it is acceptable for both sides. Uh, okay, so there is a question. FHE is for security. No, both FHE and Gabo circuit is for security, but they have different uh, trade off in, in terms of cost, right? FHE, very high cost of computation on the server side. Uh, Gabo circuit? No, 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 no. Gabo circuit does not review anything. Gabo circuit and FHE give the same result in terms of security. They just cost differently in terms of computation communication. Yes, so uh, there is uh, another method that is called secret sharing base, uh, but we're not covering that in this uh, in this in this in this talk. Yes. Cool. So, um, moving up. Yeah. So we're trying to bring more applications, applications, um, more MPC applications. Uh, what do you think is the main challenge to to making them? Uh, yeah, friend. So uh, I think that there are several uh, challenges uh, when we want to engage with the MPC to build some application, right? So the first one is how you're going to to write your circuit or to write your program. We have only seen three approaches, right? Uh, in uh, like in using API, uh, using some crystal fashion uh, circuit like like it's a text file. Or we can use uh, circuit. Now, uh, like there are, a, I, I don't think it is very easy to to use API or to have uh, to compose uh, the crystal fashion uh, circuit because in the end you you are also uh, doing something with the API. It is like a mix uh, mix approach, right? But uh, I think that having uh, more MVC DSL or trying to uh, using trying to use uh, an existing uh, DSL such as Circon for writing MVC application uh, that is uh, a good thing to do. But uh, there are certain challenges with respect to uh, usability and uh, composability and reusability of these uh, these these DSLs. So there are some some challenge to, to overcome there. Uh, the second, I think, what is uh, one of the important challenge in uh, doing MPC application is the is the deployment. Uh, MPC is not uh, a well understood topic among uh, let's say most of the, the developers, uh, and uh, what is written in the paper is also has certain subtleties that only cryptographers after like really picking their brain they can understand what is what is going on there so uh trying to have a deployment uh, environment that actually match what is happening in the paper so we can securely use the uh, the mpc protocol is not uh, very trivial uh yeah and then uh you consider you can you can also consider a uh, different cost uh, model as uh, what we have done with this uh, privacy preserving uh, health health uh, health data app, right? So, what is the computation that you're going to do? What is the communication that you can afford? Uh, do you want to do it uh, with a lot of latency or not? So that all depends. Uh, which uh, protocol that you choose that that is more suitable for the application yeah and finally uh, so MPC uh, does not really constitute of only uh, double circuit secret sharing base or FHE you also have to compose it with CKP and maybe some authentication some encryption and <laughs> yeah that is uh, going to be uh, a mess for security so you have to do it very, very carefully. 
Yeah, I guess uh, those are the points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, so I think we're early into this. Um, oh, sure, uh, Kenty, do you want to ask something? Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess uh, we can uh, receive questions, but we have been receiving a lot. Um, so just type your final questions. Uh, and yeah, I would like to invite you guys to the PSE Discord. Uh, you can hop on there and ask your questions anytime. We'll be happy to help you in whatever you're trying to uh, know or ask about MPC, or if you want to contribute to any of the repositories that we're currently working on. Um, we also have this uh, MPC research uh, compilation. I'm not sure I have the link uh, right now. So I would like to share it in the chat. Um, oh, let, let me do it. OK, yeah. Yes, we have uh, open, open channels in, in, in PSC. Um, so just um, ask your questions there. Uh, we'll be happy to, to help. Um, I don't think we have a tag as uh, MPC team. So um, yeah, we will just, uh, we just read the chat, I guess. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you, Nam, for sharing this, uh, this uh, completion of uh, yeah a lot of the things that Nam has been talking about today, and yeah, some some other stuff. Um, so yeah, I think we can uh, wrap this up, Vinny. Well, all right. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, we're gonna do a second session of this. Uh, Jumpstart series uh, is coming up in March. Uh, all right, more details <laughs> coming soon, I guess. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone. Um, thanks for joining and uh, have a good day, have a good night. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Um, Teams, can we stay for a little to be brief? Sure. Uh, yeah, about the recording, I think, uh, Vinny, you're the one who will handle that.